This fourth video on MATLAB looks at how to analyse transfer functions. Now, previous videos in this series showed how we could enter Laplace transforms or transfer functions and also how we could create closed loop transfer functions. So the next question is, what can we infer from these transfer functions that we've generated? And so this video is going to look at how we extract some core information linked to those transfer functions. In particular, we're going to consider two things only. How do we infer the steady state gain from a transfer function? And how do we calculate the pole and zero positions? Now, you are reminded that we have covered these concepts in some earlier videos on behaviors. So we're not here trying to define what steady state gain or how does behavior depend on pole zero positions. We know that already. What we're really saying is, how do we get this information out of MATLAB? Now, before we start, just a reminder of the basic assumption we're going to make. So we've got some form of system here where there's an input going in to a process. I'll call it G of S. And there's my input U of T or U of S and an output coming out. We're going to assume for now that the input is constant because without a constant input, steady state gain is not really meaningful. So there's my input and I'm going to assume the constant value is A. What happens to the output when I do this? So I've got a constant input coming in and I'm interested to say, what does the output do? Well, the output's going to move around a bit, jiggle for a bit before it settles. And I'm going to assume that it settles at capital B. And the question we're asking when we're talking about steady state gain is what's the relationship between B and A? So what steady state output do I get given a certain steady state input U? Now, you will have covered before that the relationship is this. B equals G of 0 times A. So I take the transfer function G of S and I simply substitute S equals 0. So the question now is, can I get MATLAB to do this for me? Well, the answer is yes. MATLAB has got a very simple command for calculating G of 0. And it's given to you here very clearly. You write gain or any variable you want to. And the key command is bowed g comma zero. Now a note, there are other ways that you could calculate g of zero, such as extracting the numerator and denominator coefficients and finding the constants, etc, etc. But that involves a lot more code. So I would recommend you use the bode command because it's the simplest. What we'll do next is we will illustrate this on MATLAB. Right, so first of all, let's enter some transfer functions and see what happens. So first of all, I'm going to enter a transfer function G. There it is, 114. So, oops, I'll remove that semicolon so you can see. There it is, G is 1 over S plus 4. Now, what do you think the steady state gain of this is? You can see there's a 1 in the numerator, S plus 4 in the denominator. If I set S equal to 0, I get a quarter. Well, let's see what happens if I use the bode command. So I write gain equals bode brackets g. Oops, something's gone wrong there. Sorry, I forgot to put comma zero. Gain equals bode g comma zero. And what do you see? You get 0 0.25 as expected. Let's try a different transfer function. I've got some, I've got them stored up here for us. So let's bring that m across. So there you are, m equals s plus 1 over s plus 2. Now, if I was to calculate m of 0, that is set s equal to 0, you can see clearly I would get 1 over 2, or a half. So let's try this. So I'm going to write bode of m comma 0. And what do we get? We get a half, as expected. All right, let's look at another transfer function. Here it is. <coughs> t, which is 2 over s squared plus 0.2s plus 3. What if I wanted the steady state gain for this transfer function? Well, again, set s equal to 0, so I get rid of the s squared, I get rid of the 0.2s, and I get left with 2 thirds. So let's try this. We'll put bode t, 0. 
And what do we get? We get two thirds. And a final example. There's k, it's a bit messier. s squared plus 3s plus 4 over 2s cubed plus 5s squared plus 3s plus 1. And again, you can see from your understanding of steady state gain that the answer would be 4 for the steady state gain. But we'll just demonstrate that Bode will do this for you. Now, the key point <coughs> that the um, reader needs to rec recognize here is that, OK, you could work out what these gains were yourself just by looking at the command window because the numbers were simple. But in general, this may have to be embedded in some code. You may not know what the numbers are. The algebra might not be quite so simple. And you need to have confidence that writing Bode g, comma, 0, or whatever the transfer function is, comma, 0, will give you the answer you need. Pole and zero positions. <coughs> Positions of poles and zeros have a major impact on behaviours, so we need to be able to compute them automatically if we can. Now students could use TF data to extract the numerator denominator coefficients and then do roots on each of those in turn. However, there is a quicker and more efficient way of doing it, and that's to use this command here, which is PZMAP, which stands for pole zero map. Tell me where the poles and zeros are. So there's two obvious ways of using this. You can use this one here, p comma z equals p z map brackets g, and that will put the poles in position p and the zeros in position z. Obviously, as normal, you can use whatever variable names suit your needs. Alternatively, you can just write p z map g, and instead of giving you an answer in terms of numbers and variables, that will actually create a figure that shows where the poles and zeros are. So we'll show this on MATLAB. So let's start with maybe g. So if I put g down here, there's g, then I could have done p comma z equals p z map brackets g. And what do you notice? It comes back with a pole is at minus 4. That's what I expected. And there's no zeros. Alternatively, I could have looked at m. So there's m. So I could do p comma z equals p z map of m. And here, what do you notice? I've got a pole at minus 2. That's from the s plus 2. A 0 at minus 1. That's from the s plus 1. Let's look at k. So that was a bit messier. And you might say, oh, golly, I can't see where the poles and 0 are quite so simply. But there we go. p comma z equals p z map k. And there's your answer. Just gives them out. It gives you all the poles in p, all the zeros in z. OK, you might say, fine, I can get the numeric values. What if um, I do just want to look at this on a picture? Well, let's start with m, because m was simple. I had one zero and one pole. So I'll go back to that command where we had pz map of m. And what I will do is I'll remove the output arguments. So now I'm not asking for output arguments. So it says, all right, I'll just produce a figure. So there you go. You can see the figure has appeared. And what you'll notice is it's put the 0 at minus 1 and the pole at minus 2. You'll note the zeros marked with circles and the poles marked with a cross. Right, I'm just going to rub those two out because I'm going to need this figure again. All right, what about k? k was a bit messier. What happens if I do pz map brackets k? And lo and behold, what do you see? You see I've got a pole marked here, two poles marked here, and two zeros marked here. So it shows me very clearly where the poles and zeros are positioned. So in conclusion, we've demonstrated how to use the MATLAB to find the steady state gain and the pole zero positions for transfer functions. Clearly, you can apply these on open loop transfer functions or closed loop transfer functions, whatever suits your needs. Now, while other methods are possible on MATLAB, in the view of the author, the other methods are not quite as efficient or as simple.